God held in his mind an eternal fact not revealed to angels, nor men, nor the Son of Man, Jesus, manifested in the flesh, the Son of God, until it was revealed the mystery of what he accomplished before the foundation of the world, lighting every man that come in the world, Christ in you, the hope of glory, to restore man from that which was lost to the fall of Adam and Eve. Had the devil known that eternal fire to be manifested in time, he would not have crucified Jesus. It was how the symbols in the Old Testament of a lamb slain without spot or blemish. A thousand years after that manifested in time, John announces it. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Prophets of old predicted this event and they pondered these things, not understanding them. Many times told to seal up their books until they're revealing. Paul announced it. The mystery. Since time began, hidden among not only the Jew, but also the Gentile. Christ in you. The mind of Christ. This eternal promise established between the Father and the Son, empowered by the Holy Spirit that God would not be willing that any would perish, but that all would come into the realization of his original intent before the fall of Adam, and restore man, reconcile him back, for once they left, they would return, if they would embrace his finished work, accomplished before the world began, prior to the fall of Adam, Prior to the need of deliverance, salvation, that injustice of our being born to the loins of Adam, being under the wrath of God, was, was corrected by an act of God who dealt with the iniquity that originated in heaven that was manifested in the garden, and that iniquity being to override God's original intent to manifest his kingdom on earth as it was in heaven. And Lucifer, usurping that power from our first parents, Adam and Eve, seeking to establish his kingdom and doing away with man and establishing the angelic host as the sons of God. To what angel would he ever say, Behold, this day thou art my son? To none. We are the sons of God. It's we that inherit the God given right to express and expand the expression of the Father and who he is and who we are in a world that would have not had to end it had Adam not cut himself from God and listened to the devil's lie and fall into that iniquity, that rebellion of acting independent from God, establishing our own ideas and opinions of a world. In this act of rebellion, God subjected this world that would intended to last forever. It would have had no beginning, no end world without end, but because of all that, to get us out of this trap that was set for us by Lucifer and his jealousy and 
Candidate would be trapped here forever. Cut off from God. Our love for humanity. He bars her way to the tree of life. Now that they have partaken of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil and become like gods, listening to the devil's lie, making their own decisions. God bars them from the tree of life, lest they be trapped here forever. It comes out later in scripture that this place that he has prepared for the devil and his angels who left their original habitat state is called Gehenna. We need not go there. That place was never prepared for us. This world would have been ours, but was usurped by Satan himself. And in its place, before the foundations of this world, he prepared a place for us. But Lucifer would not dwell in heaven or on earth. It's a place prepared before the foundation of the world, before the fall of Adam and Eve, and God's for knowledge for new. All that would play out in that place which we call heaven. Well, Isaiah calls, and Isaiah 64 calls the kingdom of the continuance. It's a place for those of this continuance, of a kingdom that had no beginning, no end. It held reserve. Reserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, a peace that passes all our understanding. Your eyes have not seen this, nor have your ear heard it, but God has prepared it for us. Those things which God loves, He's prepared it for them. Those are the continuance. Now, if not join this world, the flesh, the devil, has surrendered by an act of your free will, allow God to a process to wean them from that which they were born into to the loins of Adam. Things called the flesh, a race, causes creeds and gender, temporary expressions that should have expressed a kingdom that had no beginning, no end, but rather what it's done is cut off that world and made this real and made that kingdom unreal. The devil's lie. It's a trap. If you listen to that lie, Follow after the flesh, a race calls to creeds and gender. We're warning, Romans 8, you're on your way to dying. Not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritual death. And being eternally cut off from God. That need not be. God has corrected that. What was considered injustice, God has corrected it to what he calls justification. He placed you as though you never fell to an act of his son offering to take our place. What the first Adam had failed to accomplish to express that kingdom in this world, the son of God, when offered these kingdoms by Lucifer himself because he had possessed them, you search them from Adam and from men. Rejects, does not embrace the offer. It doesn't bow the knee to the devil. He worships the Father. And that eternal kingdom from which he came, he knew he would return. But through his death, burial, and resurrection, he leads captive those who were captive and gives gifts unto men. He restores what Adam lost. And all he asks that we do is embrace that. Good news. The gospel. Of his finished work. In the shed blood of Christ. A lot of this is developed a greater depth than what this video is bringing out. And it is the song of the Lamb of God slain 
before the foundation of the world is the everlasting gospel. Now people were puzzled as to how could Jesus be slain before the world began when we know him to be slain 2,000 years ago. What was accomplished there? All things finished before the world began. In the mind of God, if you can only see it that way, and only express here, and all we do is commemorate what was manifest in time and space, that eternal fact, Christ claimed before the world began. You can come to understand that, but for many who first come to appropriate any degree, embrace their salvation through his work rather than their own, you may not understand that, but through time you will. But to understand that, this carnal idea of thinking to a process of sanctifying the work of the Holy Spirit will undo what you've done and what others have done to you around you, to the secular and the religious world. At the losing of this mind, you gain the mind of Christ and you see things from him who was from above and was not of this world and then express what he seen and heard from his father as a son of man quite like us he wasn't unique in that he was anything special he was the son of God manifested as the son of man in flesh but he set aside the infant use of an attitude to make him qualify as a real man he was tested as you were tested, tempted. He was touched by all your infirmities. He understands you better than you can think. You have people say, but that was Jesus. No, he was the son of man, quite like you. If you want to understand the son of man, how he is like you, really get in Philippians chapter two. Who being in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal to God, but took upon him the form of a servant, became obedient, even unto death. He'd emptied of himself. Who was he? He was the Son of God. Rather than him dealing with things and answering things, he became like you, and became dependent. As the Son of Man, upon the Father's words, the Father's actions, the Father's power, the Father's strength, rather than that of his own. His flesh was weak, but his spirit was strong. It never lost contact with the Father, was never cut off from the Father. Other than on the cross, when he takes his mind, his body, and by the power of his quickened human spirit, he saves us all by a once for all expression of a once for all act accomplished before we were born. For those of you that may not quite understand this, I have it drawn out, laid out, of rather long videos, short videos, I've expressed it to just words, or sometimes I just have music in the background, but up scripture. I come at it from everywhere I possibly could. So there's no reason to be offended. If one video you don't like, one video go to the next. Find that which express meets your need. Will speak to you and bring you to understand how Christ is in you. Watch for my new series called Times of Angels and Men that are manifested to a fictional story, eternal facts established 